Okay, well my new interface cards have arrived. I'll get one assembled, disconnect the analyzer from the board, get the new card plugged in, get the analyzer connected to that. We'll fire the analyzer up before we plug a VGA card into the new adapter just to make sure there are no issues. And uh, then we'll plug a card in and see if we've made any progress. So as you can see, I've assembled one of the adapter boards it just plugs into the same socket that we were probing with the logic analyzer um, but it brings those connections out not only to the logic analyzer but also to this PCI connector at the top here you can see I've also included the PS2 connector and then normally there'd be a 10-way ribbon cable goes from this connector up to the one on the uh, CPU card I've left that off for now I want to try one thing at a time now I have already run up the analyzer without the VGA card plugged in uh, this is a VGA card out of one of my 486s by the way uh, and I got exactly the same uh, results I did when the um, logic analyzer was connected direct to the CPU so I decided not to bore you with that it's exactly the same you can just look at the previous video to see what uh, the results were as I say it was identical which is what I was hoping for um, that is I haven't uh, got the connections wrong I haven't crossed over the power it's not going to blow anything up and uh, the CPU still um, did the same thing it did before so I've now plugged in a VGA card and this is one that uh, in theory it should work on this it's got the right type of chipset judging by the values I was seeing on the logic analyzer um, but as ever I wanted to video this before I switch it on for the first time just so you can see what I'm seeing now this might not work I might have something wrong with the connections and we still might not have the right interface the VGA card might be supposed to plug in somewhere else it might even um, be supposed to plug into the the motherboard but I kind of doubt it I would have thought they'd make this so they could plug this in while this uh, rack was assembled so um, I've got a, a monitor attached VGA can be a bit um, temperamental especially with these old cards and some newer LCD displays won't work with all types of VGA card but I've got one that um, this one I use mostly for CNC work and it uh, is often connected to 486 machines so uh, in theory it should work I have already tested this today on one of my 486s and it uh, does work on the 486 S not the same video card but similar type of video card same chipset so um, fingers crossed no more excuses let's power this up and see what happens shouldn't do any damage to the uh, CPU card even if we're wrong here um, but I have got the current limit set fairly conservatively on all, all three power rails so I'll get this powered up and we'll see what happens so uh, nothing so far okay well good news I'll move the camera we now have video it's same missing operating system keyboard detected so we are getting VGA out of this uh, saying at the top you can see AMI BIOS stated 1992 but um, that's the, this particular build the BIOS itself is uh, much older than that showing the correct hard disk uh, so that's as far as I'm going to go in this video a very short video today um, this was really the goal of the video to see if we could get to the point where in theory we can get a BIOS showing on the screen. What I will try doing is just see if I can reset it with the keyboard, which I can. Same press F1, so we'll try that. Entering setup, and we are into the BIOS setup. So um, I say we'll leave it here for now. I don't know what the settings need to be. I haven't looked into it yet. They'll be fairly straightforward, and. Um, it's just really a case now of going through this, getting this configured for the uh, machine so it runs the way it should do, and uh, then we should be able to boot to the system. 
a bit surprised it's saying um, it's an invalid operating system, but it could be that when the BIOS was lost, uh, the system tried writing to the hard disk and wrecked the installation, but I believe the owner has the installation floppy disks. Um, also, we can try booting to a DOS disk in the next video and see if we get that showing on the screen as well. But this was really the, the first major step and the first obstacle um, has now been overcome. Uh, we were basically told this was impossible, um, so um, quite pleased that this has uh, gone as far as it has already. And I'm hoping it gets a bit more straightforward after this. So uh, look out for the next video, we'll go through the configuration and then hopefully I can get this buttoned up and sent back to the owner.